Chinook High School, home of your very own Chinook Blue Comets. And tonight's matchup, we take on Paola. But right now, if you please stand, remove your hats and face the flag, place your hands over your heart for the playing of our national anthem by our Chinook Blue Pride marching band directed by Miss Rebecca Davis. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Chanute High School, your home of Comet Vision and the Chanute Blue Comets. My name is Caleb Wood. I am the director of broadcasting here. Alongside me is Bryson Genswider. He is a junior here at Chanute High School here helping me commentate today. And we have the Chanute Blue Comets taking on the Paola Panthers. We just finished up the girls game. Now we are going into the boys game first. We want to go over a few keys for tonight. For the Paola Panthers, we want, uh, in order for them to be successful during the game today, they need to force contested shots at the rim. Blue Comets have been struggling lately with contested shots at the rim. Uh, and for the Blue Comets, what they need to do is they need to dominate the boards. Uh, that's the biggest thing that they have found success in throughout the year is if they get the rebound game, both on offense and defense, they have found success uh, pretty consistently throughout the season. For the Pale of Panthers starting lineup uh, is a lineup of juniors. Number one, J.D. Troutman. Number two, Caden Cohey. Number three, Jace Curley. Number 24, Micah Sanders. And number 40, Isaac Hall. And for the Chanute Blue Comets, we have a handful of seniors and a junior here with Jordan Duncan, number 20. Number five, Caden Seamster. Number 12, Rhett Smith. Number 33, Lars Kester. And finally, number 35, Elliot Stevenson. We have a great matchup tonight. Uh, the Paola Panthers here with kind of a chip on their shoulders with an 0 and 11 season. Uh, Blue Comets here on the kind of the opposite here with an 8 and 3 winning record uh, coming into the game tonight. Bryson, what do you think are some other keys that you can see that uh, Paola will need to? implement in order to stay into the game? I think they will 100% have to be efficient from the three-point line and also be efficient from the free throw line. And also one thing that Chanute can do better than what they normally do is a lot of times they have rough third quarters. There's four quarters in a game. If they miss out on that third quarter is the reason they get in the sticky situations when it comes down the stretch. Absolutely. Blue Comets tipping off for them is going to be Caden Seamster. And for the Panthers is going to be number 24, Micah Sanders. Both pretty tall kids, both very athletic. And Caden Seamster comes out on top with the opening tip. Blue Comets usually do a great job of working the ball around. Finding those open threes, they have a lot of shooters on their team. Not a whole lot we know as of right now about Paola. Looking down low for Larson, now to Seamster. Over to Jordan Duncan, the shooter, and that's going to be good for his first three-pointer of the night. Jordan Duncan this past weekend was the 
52nd annual Ralph Miller Classic three-point champion. We had several uh, five, six, eight teams and uh, another four, eight team here um, in the competition. He came out on top as the best shooter of the evening. Paola driving in. Caden Cohey dishes it off. Amazing pass there. To Isaac Hall. Isaac Hall for two. He's also a big body down low that's can, gonna probably make a big uh, effect for the Panther offense. Stevenson at the free throw line. <coughs> Looking for the spin move right hand. And that's good, Elliot Stevenson for two. Great move. Chanu is now showing a little bit of press. A little bit of pressure here. Paola breaks the press and swinging the ball around the court. Sanders gives the ball over. Three point attempt by Curley, no good. Sanders with the rebound and he puts it back for two. 5-4 early lead for the Blue Comets. Jordan Duncan left some room, and that's another three-pointer for him. Hand down, man down is what we say around You here. give him room, he's going to make you pay for it. Troutman bringing the ball up the court. Fakes the handoff, goes up and under. No good. Misses the Great attempt. There. Great attempt on the reverse there. Elliot Stevenson goes all the way. Picks up the offensive foul. Head coach Devin Crabtree a little confused about it as well. Didn't really see where that kind of took place. We got a sub in already for the Panthers. Hoyt Hoffin. He is a sophomore standing at, shows that he's standing at six foot four, but he looks to be more along the lines of six foot six. I think they're uh, not giving him enough credit for his height there. Troutman driving middle. Goes for the acrobatic finish, doesn't knock it down. Caden Seamster. Looks like I believe they call a, a jump, jump ball. ball. Caden Seamster barely got his hand on it, but I mean, that's better than a, a foul. Yep. We also have a Eli Richmond in. As he gets a rebound, puts it back for two. He's also a big body on the court. Probably an offensive lineman in the fall for the Panthers. Rhett Smith now with the ball at the top of the key. Back to Stevenson. Stevenson looking for Seamster to post up. He decides not to. Custer cuts through, was wide open. Decided not to get it though. Smith looking for Duncan to come around. Now to Custer doing a little motion offense, cutting through, passing the ball around, keeping guys out of the paint unless they're cutting. Seamster now. Chanute is fine with taking their time here to find the shot that they believe is the best one they can get on the possession. Seamster with a three-point attempt. That's going to be way short. Stevenson, great job. Great heads up out, play. Throwing it off the leg. It looks like that was Micah Sanders that it came off of. Great heads up play there. Blue Comets to throw the ball in on the baseline. Custer gets it to Stevenson. He gets blocked by Richmond. Gets his rebound back. Chris Harding in for the Blue Comets. Given Seamster a little bit of a rest there. Harding now back over, swinging around Blue Comets. Swinging it pretty good. Custer going in, and it looks like another jump ball call. That's going to stay with Chanute. It's going to stay here. This is a. Uh, I don't even know what to say. I mean, we saw how many jump ball calls were had been called in the girls' game. Uh, as of right now, it looks like there's not going to be much different here in the boys. Elliot Stevenson now with the ball. Larson driving middle. Oh. Gets it. Tried to get it to Chris Harding, but he cut right at the worst time. Chris Harding now with the rebound with no numbers, though. They're going to hold up until Stevenson... And Custer come back, but Rhett Smith with the little floater on in the middle of the name. On that last play, a cheerleader was wiped out on the sideline. <coughs> she looks to be taking a breather. Yeah. 
<coughs> Richmond. He will force the foul there. I believe that's on Chris Harding. Yep, that'll be Chris's first foul. Second team foul of the night. And uh, Crabtree having a little discussion with the referee asking, you know, Richmond was had his elbows out, was using his elbows. How are we gonna how are we supposed to play if you're gonna call every call like that? Troutman with the three-point attempt is gonna be no good. Stevenson, Pat dishes it up to Harding. Harding goes out, Plus one. and he will pick up the and one for the Blue Comets. Wait, I mean, he can just hang in the air there for a minute and be able to concentrate enough to be able to knock that down. Plus the foul, Chris, very great play. Chris Harding, sophomore, also varsity quarterback, out here with a three-point play, giving the Blue Comets helping them maintain the early lead. Rest Smith with a little poke there. He'll pick up his fourth. Fourth point of the evening early on here. Blue Comets 15 to six. Paola. Paola's got some big guys on their team. They're gonna have to rely on using that big, those big bodies and forcing fouls. Smith trying not to foul here. Three second in the lane call. Looks like that might have been on Richmond. Richmond trying to talk to the ref asking, was that me? I wasn't, you know, I wasn't in the lane. I had one foot out of the lane, which in basketball, it doesn't matter if you have a foot out of the lane or not. If you're in the lane, you're in the lane. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's gonna be a timeout. Well, I believe a 30 second. 30 second timeout for Paola. We'll be right back with a commercial right after this. Landscape Coffee House is dedicated to high school and college students. Our mission is for every student in Southeast Kansas to know they have value, they are loved, and that they have a place. We are not a church, but we are motivated by the love God has for all of us. The Firescape opened in 1998 and is open every Friday and Saturday night for high school and college age students. During the week, the Firescape is open to the public Tuesday through Friday mornings for coffee, catch-ups, or small groups like Bible studies. The Firescape Coffee House is proud to partner with the Schnute High School Tech Classes on this broadcast. And we're back. Blue Comets up 15 to six. Oh, Stevenson gets the pass from Lars Custer. He's going right into the lane and will foul. Going up for two and he's gonna go to the line. Coming into this game, the Blue Comets have won four of their last Five on quite the impressive run, looking to keep this alive. They are up nine points with Elliott Stevenson at the line, looking to push that lead to 10, possibly 11. Caden Seamster is now checking back in for Rhett Smith. Isaac Hall also in for the Blue Comets. Stevenson, did he make that first free throw? Yeah, but he knocked down both those free throws there. Stevenson now with four points for the Blue Comets. Troutman bringing the ball up for the Panthers. <clears throat> Gets it over to Curley. Curley looking down low for Sanders, but Sanders was looking to just cut all the way through. Throws the ball out of bounds. It's going to be Blue Comet basketball. A lot of a lot of times when you do make that cut, you won't get the ball thrown to you, so you'll get into a habit of just not even really looking for it. Right. You always need to show yourself to the ball so that you can possibly get an easy layup down there. Harding looking for for a Custer down low. He's not afraid to post up a little bit, and he'll go up for two himself. The lefty with the two points. Seamster guarding Troutman up top. Kind of a mismatch there. Blocking foul, that's gonna be, I believe, on Larson Custer. Caden Cohey did a great job cutting to the rim, driving hard and, and picking up that foul. 
One thing that I would like to see more often is Chanute trying to get the ha the ball into the hands of Jordan Duncan. I mean, he started off this game two for two from the three-point line. We know he's a great shooter. like to see him get the ball a little more. Here's the issue you're going to find, though, is that especially with those two early threes, you're going to find Paola guarding him much mm -hmm. closer than anybody else for, the, yeah. for a little while until they forget that he's a shooter. And then they can even use that to their advantage to get other easy buckets. Kohe's second shot off the mark. Stevenson now with the ball at the top of the key. Harding looking down low to a wide open. Custer. Larson now has four. We have four Blue Comets with four points. And Jordan Duncan with six. Pardon me, Chris Harding only has three, not four. Sanders over to Troutman. Troutman looking for somebody, finally gets it to Hall. Hall over to Sanders, Sanders to Curley. Curley back to Sanders. Sanders going up, contested and still makes it. Micah Sanders with a tough two points. Seamster going up strong, gets his own rebound, puts it back up for two. Caden Seamster also fighting for his points. Chanu has, or Paola has quite the mismatch here with Kohe being guarded by Jordan Duncan. I'd like to see them try to get the ball into his hands and take advantage of that height advantage they have there. Kohe at the top here. Larson Custer playing defensive post player as Hall Tries to post him up. That's going to be Blue Comet basketball off of Troutman's foot. We got a couple more subs coming in. We got Hoffine and we have Richmond coming in for the Panthers. Landon Bilby checking in for Larson Kester here for the Blue Comets. Along with Tristan Katzer, the senior, the one of two seniors. Him and Richmond are the only seniors on the team. Very, uh, very junior and sophomore filled roster. Jordan Duncan from the logo. Heat check. <laughs> he, he really wanted that. Oh, I, I guess it was coming down. Didn't quite have a uh, full idea uh, as to what the time was. But we're going to go ahead and take a 60 second break. We'll be right back right here on Common Vision. Cut. Beautiful. OK, let's go again. Tell me about your vision. At the end of the day, it's your classic coming of age story. Can I need more shipping labels? All the gig speed, fiber fueled internet you need to take whatever and make it big. Sparklight Internet, a stronger connection. Cardinal Drugstore, located at 103 East Main in downtown Chanute, is a small town pharmacy and gift store, which includes an old fashioned soda fountain. They specialize in compounds and vaccines. They also supply many types of medical items. Cardinal Drugstore is your one stop shop for all of your health care needs. KFEX and Comet Vision are so grateful for your support. And we're back here at CHS. Who comments with a relatively demanding lead to begin the uh, to begin the game, 23-9. Bryson, what are the Blue Comets doing right right now? Well, they've been able to stretch out the defense, and they've been able they've been knocking down their threes, and that has led to a lot of easy buckets at the rim. And they've been playing smothering defense and getting turnovers and just forcing bad shots on the other end. Absolutely. On the flip side here, we've also got we've also got some big bodies for Paola utilizing that post block really well. Hoffine gets called for the little stutter there. He'll pick up the traveling call. That's going to be Blue Comet basketball. Young player making young mistakes. Harding, bringing it up for the Blue Comets, gets it to Bilby, swings it over to Duncan. Duncan thought about it there, standing at least four feet behind the three-point line, not afraid to take those shots. Back up to Seamster. Bilby on the backside, pretty wide open, gets tries to get it to Smith. 
Duncan for another three, and that's going to be good. He is on fire, ladies and gentlemen. Three for four, Jordan Duncan. If it weren't for the one from the logo, he'd be three for three right now. He has the same amount of points as their whole team does. Troutman up and under, no good. Bilby with the rebound. Gets it to Smith. Smith over to Seamster. He'll Euro step in, get pick up the blocking foul, and he'll go to the line for two. Seventeen point game here in this second quarter. A lot of great defense really being played by the Comets. Absolutely, and they're, they're really spreading the ball around mm -hmm. the uh, around the the whole team. You have several players that already have multiple points. They called that foul on the floor there. Bilby gets it over to Seamier, Seamster, rather. Back to Harding now to Duncan. Over to Bilby again, near side. Smith. See, they're, they're pointing out Duncan everywhere he goes, not letting him get any, any room because they know he'll knock it down. Seamster now with a pretty long three, and that's going to be good for him. Caden Seamster also not afraid of the three-point attempt. As we can see, throughout the year, we've had plenty of plenty of players who just thrive from behind the arc. Looks like that might be Landon Bilby picking up the foul on the block. One thing I'd like to point out is Brett Smith does a very good job of playing a lot of pressure on defense without fouling. He's able to poke the ball free without fouling and just be able to get in their face without putting them to the line. That's Hoffine. Jalen Jalen Durant Duncan. <laughs> okay. Checking in for his brother Jordan Duncan. That is actually his middle name. Is it actually? Quite the middle name he's got. I, I did not know that. Hoyt Hoffine picks up the foul there. A little uh, misuse of his hands against the defense here. Jalen Duncan now. Harding looking oh. for an interesting lob. Not sure what was Seems going on there. Seems to an alley-oop, but uh, Chris Harding just tried to throw a quick pass in there to get him a layup. I mean, I'm fine with a little bit of showtime up 20 points. Absolutely. Bilby going up right-handed, and he's going to get the and one. Landon Bilby, who really hasn't seen a ton of time on the court for the Blue Comets this year, is now trying to make a statement of his own early on. Picking up the and one, see if he can make this a three-point play. I mean, everybody's getting a turn with the ball here. Isaac everybody's Hall. making plays. Isaac Hall in for Eli Richmond. I don't have the stats here, but... We've played quite an efficient game, not missing very many shots. Absolutely. Bilby, that's three for him. Not very many turnovers either. Great game here, play being so far. I wouldn't be surprised if early on in the second half, Crabtree reaches pretty deep into his bench. Mm -mm. I mean, Reaching 20. foul there for on Rhett Smith. It's going to be Caden Cohey that forced that. We may be seeing some freshmen getting play time later in this game, depending on how we can keep the game going. There's Rhett with another steal. That's another two points for Rhett Smith. Should have dunked it. <laughs> yeah, interestingly enough, this year, head coach Devin Crabtree has really utilized uh, or has really invited the freshman class onto the uh, onto the bench quite a bit. You, we obviously have Jalen Duncan as Caden Seamster picks up a reaching foul. We have Jalen Duncan. We also have uh, Chaney. I can't remember his first name. Lawrence Chaney. Lawrence Chaney. We have Warwick, Warwick Olson, Olson and son and of Brett Olson. Brett Olson. Yeah, he's a Shoe High KU, School alum. KU basketball alum Exactly. As well. And we also have Daniel Stanley also sitting on the bench. He just recently made his way up from the JV team and is now sitting on the bench on varsity. So it'd be really cool to see them get some playing time in the second half. Mm -hmm. Pick up foul there on 25. That's going to be Landon Bilby's second foul. As Lars Kester comes in, going to substitute him out. Oh, yep. Seamster thought it was him. 
Panthers get the ball and Troutman up and under again off the mark. Second jump ball. Second time. Jump ball between Jalen Duncan and Isaac Hall. The biggest and probably smallest guy on the court. Mm -hmm. Sorry, guys on the court. Blue Comets now with the ball. Smith looking for Custer. We had a uh, Colby check in. Oh, yeah, Colby Baker. And he's already Blue getting Comets. the bucket. Picks up two of his own. The crowd loves Colby Baker. Troutman with some fancy moves, getting it over, trying to get it over to Kobe, throws Please it away. Get. Sanders tries to get that, but Seamster comes up with two points. Paola's head coach is going to call a full timeout here. We've got a, a 60 second timeout. We're going to take two commercial break here. We'll be right back right after this. From kickoff to the final lap, from Pee Wee's. To the weekend pros. Our team of doctors can help with the diagnosis and treatment of sports related injuries. Wherever you are in your sports journey, Labette Health Sports Medicine team has the training, experience, and skill to repair, restore, and renew. For more information about Southeast Kansas' leading orthopedic and sports medicine program, go to labettehealth.com. The Medicine Shop Pharmacy, located right across the street from Royster Middle School in downtown Chinook, is in the business of making you feel better, faster. With three licensed pharmacists, the Medicine Shop has the knowledge to know the right drugs and the proper dosage to ensure your safety. If you're not quite up to your game, Medicine Shop offers delivery to your door. The Medicine Shop, a proud underwriter of the Chinook Blue Commerce. <laughs> Blue Comets with a de very demanding lead at this point. 38-9 over the uh, Paola Panthers. Boy, almost 30 point lead here in the first half. As Paola, what, you know, what are you looking to do to even try to stay in this game? I mean, you really got just gotta get the ball into your playmaker's hands. I'm not familiar with who that is, but as a team, they definitely do know who that is, and they need to. Well, I, I feel like it's very apparent that, uh, unfortunately, Paola gets the travel call, but I think it's it's very apparent that Paola's three main guards between Troutman, Kohe, and Curley, all very, very good athletes. You can see that yeah. even just with their ball handling, they, uh, they're they very good basketball players. Uh, unfortunately, they, there's just something about the way that they're all playing together that isn't fully working mm -hmm. out for them tonight. And I, I would like to see them attempt more three-pointers. Haven't seen much of that from Paola. From Paola, yeah. Right. And when you're down almost 30 points, you gotta you gotta realize that three is worth more than two. Absolutely. Troutman getting trapped at half court. We see Cooper Lukey in for the Blue Comets. Also still Colby Baker, Jalen Duncan, Caden Seamster, and Larson Kester. Three-point attempt is good, as you had just mentioned by Chase Curley. And that gets them to double digits. Cooper Lukey on the go-ahead three. Seamster dishes it to Colby Baker. Off the mark, and Colby with a quick reach over. Uh, he'll pick up his first foul for the night. Great look by Caden Seamster. They're going to go to the line here. The Seamster out here wanting to get all of his teammates buckets. At the moment, we have eight Blue Comet players that have scored in this first half. You don't necessarily see that too often uh, with, with any team, let alone the shoot blue comet team. Mm -hmm. We normally have a, a handful of shooters that, uh, or a handful of scorers mm -hmm. that we usually kind of stick with. Everybody else is great ball handlers and, and everything like that, but tonight everybody's getting theirs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, normally you see the ball mainly in Seamster and 
Jordan's hands when it comes to the efficient scoring, also with um, Kester as well. Lane Hoffine, he's at the line right now. A little lane violation, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> on the blue comments. <laughs> and uh, he's, looks like he's the brother of Hoyt Hoffine, number 21, who's also out there on the court. Uh, again, both very tall kids. Both look to be about 6'5", 6'6", and very athletic. I saw Hoyt in the JV game earlier um, just casually dunk the ball after a foul like it was nothing. Did he get a tech? No. <laughs> Kohe, three-point attempt, no good. She goes Troutman. right to own player. Troutman. How is that not a jump ball? Out of the 35 jump balls they've called in the past two games, <laughs> That one was the most obvious. Jalen Duncan picks up the foul there. Had his hand all up in their business. J.D. Troutman, his first shot is not, no good. Second attempt, falls. He'll pick up his first point of the night. We got Eli Richmond back in the game for the Panthers. Luke Comet still sticking with Lukey. Baker, Duncan, now Stevenson and Custer. Panthers are on a little 5 nothing run here. Stevenson also not afraid to post somebody up. Gets called for the travel. Uh, this is a tough call. Looked like he still had his pivot foot, but the fact that he moved his other foot so much might have thrown off mm -hmm. the referee. Troutman bringing the ball up, about to get trapped past half court. Not a place you want to get caught. Picks up the ball. Stevenson picks the ball away, and he's going to have a free two points. Left-handed. Good for the Blue Comets. He's got six for the night. Stevenson, one of our best track runners, is very fast to up and down the court. Hoffine, reverse layup. It's going to be good for him. He's got extremely long arms on top of his tremendous height. Steve Custer, rather, pump fakes, drives. Colby Baker. <laughs> He was wanting to do something there, but didn't really know what to do. Got a three seconds in the lane call. I believe that was on Colby Baker. Next time I'd like to see Colby let that fly. Right. <laughs> it's his senior year. What could it hurt? Mm. Troutman gets the ball off to Kohe. Kohe drives base, or sideline rather. Point. Gets it over to Kohe again. Kohe's right hand's no good. Duncan with the rebound. Now Custer gets it over to Stevenson. Oh. Little crossover. Now to Baker. Back to Stevenson. Shoot it, Stevenson. Come on. Now to Duncan. He drives middle. Kicks it out to Custer. I thought he was about to let that fly. Back to Stevenson. As he drives middle. Goes up. He's going to wow. get fouled on the floor. Just absolutely moved 21 out of the way. Hoffine was grown man who picked type up the play right foul there. there. That's his third already, so he'll probably be sitting for a little while. They called that on the floor. So we'll be shooting free throws the rest of this quarter. Luke Comet's already in the bonus. Panthers, one play or one foul shy. Larson. Awful shot <laughs> off the top of the backboard. Didn't look like he was not quite set there. Gets a travel call from the far ref on Micah Sanders. Sanders showing some frustration out there. Minute left in this first half. Yep. Comets could hold just for the last shot. We'll see what they do. Baker sets the screen. I bet they just take what they can get. Looking for Baker on the roll, not quite there. Stevenson, great looking pass, but just a bit out of reach. 
into some traffic as well. Hard to catch those. Sanders, three-point attempts off the mark. Beautiful Gets pass. it to Lukey. Lukey going up against a very tall contender. That would have got smacked and then actually. <laughs> Back to Stevenson. Looks like we're fine with holding on to this last shot. Larson of the half. and Stevenson probably going to be the ones going back and forth until the last few seconds. Now to Baker. Stevenson. Ten seconds left. Lukey. Go ahead shot. And Kohi's going to bring it up. Five seconds left. Kicks it off his foot with 1.7 seconds. He had his eyes down that entire time, had someone roll into the paint, just couldn't find him. 1.7 seconds. The Comets are going to have to heave it. Oh, oh off the back wow. of the rim. Nearly made that. Travel call before, <laughs> even though before he, he shot. So either way, he did not travel. Even uh, if he would have made it, would I not have counted. Technically, he did travel. He dragged that last foot. We're going to go ahead and uh, take a big com uh, bit of a commercial break. We'll be right back with some more halftime entertainment right after this. Home Savings Bank is a platinum underwriter here at the Fire Escape Coffee House. Home Savings Bank has been serving the Chanute area since 1886. Customer-owned and customer-driven, Home Savings Bank, located at 214 North Lincoln Avenue in Chanute, Kansas, is here to serve all your banking needs. Whether your needs are checking, savings account, safety deposit box, lending, or online banking, Home Savings Bank is here to help. Home Savings Bank is located on the internet at homesavingschanute.com. Home Savings Bank is committed to the youth of Southeast Kansas and helping the ministries at the Fire Escape Coffee House. Missing that human touch at your bank? At Community National Bank and Trust, you'll be able to talk with a real person. Community National Bank is small enough to know you, yet big enough to offer the best products. Your busy lifestyle requires banking options like mobile deposit and people-to-people -people pay. With locations in Southeast Kansas and Southwest Missouri, Community National Bank and Trust can help keep your finances safe and your spending smarter. Online at mybankcnb.com. Community National Bank and Trust. Federally insured. Locally awesome. Member F.
Miss J.C. Cheney. J.C. Cheney, you are the Chanute Lady Cheer Squad fan of the game. And so they have your prize here. Welcome back to Comet Vision. Once again, my name is Caleb Wood. I'm the director of broadcasting. And with me is Bryson Genswider. 
He is my uh, one of my students here in our Comet Vision class. Uh, that is all student ran. This entire broadcast, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight positions in this broadcast, and they're all ran by students, with the exception of myself. Um, Bryson, you know, in the first half here, we Chanute really went off. The score, forty mm -hmm. to sixteen, is the score here at the half, and. Um, you know, looking back at the at the two keys to the game for each of these uh, teams here, you know, Blue Comets, I wouldn't say they've been dominating the boards by any means, mm -hmm. but they've been doing a great job uh, at the boards. And then on the flip side here, uh, I, I still 100% believe that if, um, if, if Paola forces Chanute into some contested shots at the rim, uh, then, you know, it, it's going to really help them out in the end. What do you think? Well... One thing with this whole season so far, the third quarter has been the main point of struggle for the Blue Comets team. We've had many games where we've gone into the third quarter leading, maybe not by this much, but then by the end we're losing and we have a hill to climb in the fourth quarter. If we can keep the pressure on through this third quarter, we can have a much greater chance of keeping ourselves in this game and winning this game. Absolutely. This on the other end would be a great time for – or a great opportunity, rather, for Paola to take advantage of Schnute's, um lackadaisicalness coming out of mm -hmm. halftime. Mm -hmm. You know, Schnute's on top. They're, they're kind of on top of the world. Referees aren't even out here yet. Uh, <laughs> it looks like everybody's on the court waiting for them, and uh, refs are coming around the corner now. <laughs> right at the buzzer. Um, but, yeah, like I was saying, you know, Paola can – they have every – opportunity right now to get these blue comets to catch them off guard you know we mm -hmm. saw it over the weekend when chanute played shawnee mission south last thursday you know they were up at halftime and then when they came out after the half you know shawnee mission really put it to them and Chanute mm -hmm. just mentally was not ready and uh i think that again this would be a great opportunity for Paolo to do the same and i would bet that this is that was a message from Crabtree in the locker room that we keep our foot on the pedal all the way through the end of the fourth quarter. Absolutely. Troutman with the ball, looking for something down low. Nothing happens. He's trying to find someone. Instead goes up and under, and he goes ahead and picks up two more for himself. He's at three right now. Jordan Duncan thought about the three-point attempt. Larson, spin move. Back to Seamster, now to Elliott. Stevenson down to Custer. Going to be over the back call on Kohi. Kohi also no points for tonight. For the Panthers, we they honestly right now have a handful of guys who have scored. They've got six people who are on the scoreboard right now between mm -hmm. Troutman, between Troutman, Kohi, Sorry, my bad. Troutman, Curley, um, Hoffine, Sanders, Hall, and Richmond. Mm -hmm. the blocking oh. foul on Caden Seamster. Trying to take a charge Plus on the one. Euro step. Micah the Sanders, Micah Sanders out here with that's now his sixth point, looking for his seventh point. He's leading his team right now in points. And sure enough, Bell, he'll pick up his seventh right there. Blue Comets right now, we have Jordan Duncan with nine. All three of those, or all nine of those are coming from three three-pointers. Uh, and then right behind him, we have Caden Seamster with seven. Duncan, Duncan trying to make it 12. Rattles in. Oh, and man. That is what we call a shooter's roll. Make that 12 for Duncan. He's in double digits early on in the second half. Kohi travel gets called for the travel. We goes talked about that multiple times in the first game here. He goes for a little jitter step there, just gets ahead of himself, doesn't get the ball on the floor quick enough, and that isn't travel. Larson Custer. Finds Elliott. Thought he was going to shoot, though. Elliott to Seamster. Seamster goes up for two himself. He's got nine. 
he added a three-pointer in the first half as well. Him and Jordan Duncan. Have been raining it. Absolutely. Troutman thought about the backdoor cut. Curly short on the three-point attempt. Off the front rim there. Brett Smith with the rebound gets it to Stevenson. Stevenson going down. Duncan had a perfect opportunity for another great layup. Three-point attempt, but it doesn't really matter because Rhett Smith now has the opportunity to make a three-point attempt of his own. He's sitting at eight points for the Blue Comets, trying to make it nine himself. He's played great defensively all game. Absolutely. As well. Gets the three the old-fashioned way. That is nine for Smith. Panthers down the floor. Troutman see a bit of a, the extent of his handles on that play. Almost, almost, almost broke Rhett there. Kohi driving middle. Really using a shoulder there and gets the and one. What a tough play. Kohi gets his first two points of the game. Kohi trying to make it three for him. And that's good. Larson Custer really driving up top. Gets blocked by Halfine. You don't really normally see Larson Custer pushing the ball up the court too terribly often unless it's late in the game. Kohi, three-point attempt, no good. Brett Smith pushes it up to Jordan Duncan. Let it fly. <laughs> Little mis miscommunication there. Yeah. It seemed like Elliot... Elliot was on the Seamster. opposite block. Elliot thought the Seamster was in the corner, so he didn't even really try to get that ball. Just See, a bit this, of a miscommunication. No, no big deal, though. But this is just the little things. They allowed an open shot on this end and then turned the ball over on this end. Things that have just led to the third quarter demise that they've had all year. Right. Larson trying to pick up the foul from Sanders. A little timeout. Looks like it might be a timeout for Paola. Yep. Paola's calling a 30-second timeout here. And 30-second timeout for Paola. We're going to go ahead and take a single commercial break. We'll be right back right after this. AFEX Firescape Radio programming is made possible in part by the underwriting efforts of Sonic Drive-In of Chanute. Sonic Drive-In of Chanute does not consider community involvement a sales gimmick or a public relations ploy. They see it as a way to be a good neighbor and as a way to have a positive impact on their community. It is for these reasons that Sonic Drive-In of Chanute is a proud underwriter of KFEX Firescape Radio and the ministry efforts of the entire Firescape ministry to the youth of Chanute. Back out of the timeout, 48-24. Blue Com is still in the lead with a 26-point lead. Four and a half minutes left in the... Oh, come on, that's all ball. Rhett just plays defense My like bad, 24-point lead. I'm a technology teacher, I'm not a... Not a math teacher. Not a math teacher. But Red just plays like that Patrick Beverly type, just pest to defense. That's right. Just making them, making the person on offense as uncomfortable as possible. Oh, almost a little backcourt violation. Kohi goes up and under. Great job there, getting to the rim by Caden Kohi. Larson gets it to Chris Harding, over to Stevenson. Back to Larson, looking up top for Seamster, swinging it around. Looks like we got Jaden or er, Jordan Duncan. Oh, we got Jordan Duncan on the bench as Chris Harding picks up a traveling call. They've been calling that move all game. Yeah, just a little shuffle of the feet before they get the move going. Get a little antsy, and then that's going to be a travel every time. Troutman gets the ball over to Hoffine. Now to Sanders. Back to Kohi as he drives middle. Troutman for a three-point attempt, and that's going to be good for him. J.D. Troutman 
now has six for the Panthers. See, just another turnover and a wide open shot. A little shove there from Kohi. Can't put your arm on a buddy. Larson was uh, on the receiving end of that foul. Blue Comets going to throw it in from their sideline. <laughs> Elliot Stevenson gets the inbounds, gets it to Chris. Now Larson driving middle. Larson likes getting to the Hop rail step. with the lefty with the strong move. Larson Custer, he's got six for the night. Shooting up to 50 points now. Kohi driving baseline gets it over. Good defense, to good Richmond. help defense from Larson. That doesn't work. Troutman now all by himself with the rebound. He picks up two more. He's now got eight points and is leading the Panthers in points. Stevenson looking to post up on Richmond. Chris Harding, three-point attempts off the mark. Troutman. Smart by Red, not a foul there. Up and under. Good. Third attempt on the reverse. No good. Seamster Quarterback jets it pass. down court to Stevenson, and he and gets the one. and one. The Elliott is so good with his left hand around the rim that it just, you never know which way he's going to go with it. Elliott now has eight points of his own. Elliott is amphibious down by the rim. Ambidextrous. <laughs> Anywho, Stevenson having a great night. Always the uh, guy on the court that's constantly trying to push the ball. We mm -hmm. got Bill be in the game for the Blue Comets. Gonna give Rhett Smith a little bit of a break. And Elliott is also an excellent playmaker. Very good passer. Stevenson. Chanute's going to take a 30-second timeout here. Nine points for Stevenson. We're going to go ahead and take a single break with him. We'll be right back right after this. For years, Jared Gilmore and Phillips PA has been providing quality financial guidance to local individuals and businesses. Their expertise ranges from basic tax management and accounting services to more in-depth services such as audits, financial statements, QuickBooks support, and payroll. Jared Gilmore and Phillips PA has backed Chanute's youth in all their endeavors from the classroom to extracurricular activities. They're proud to help support the youth of Chanute by underwriting this KFEX broadcast. 223, sorry, 232 rather. Dyslexic. I must be. 232 left in the third quarter here. Taylor to start with the ball out of the timeout. 22-point advantage for the Comets here. Slowly but surely, Paola is making a little bit of a uh, dent in that deficit. Harding up for two, and that's no good. It's going to be off the Panthers. Troutman gets pulled up off the floor by Hoffine. Let's just throw a little alley-oop right here to Seamster. Wouldn't that be nice? Lobs it out to Seamster. Can't dunk from out there. Bilby now with the ball looking down low. Instead gets it to Seamster. Sorry, Stevenson then Seamster. Seamster drives through the hole and can't finish at the rim. Troutman over. Travel. To Curly off the mark for Curly. Come on. Seamster. Up and with the emphatic dunk, Caden Seamster now with 11 points. Now how awesome is that? That really get, that got the whole crowd up on their feet. He had quite a few last year, but mm -hmm. it is always fun to see it happen. Mm -hmm. You don't see a lot of dunks in SEK basketball. No, you don't. Kohi, another three-pointer for him. He's really starting to yeah. take off this half. All his points are in this quarter. He's got eight himself. 
he is tied with Troutman for points leader for the Panthers. I mean, they've they've put it up together this quarter so far. What a move. Gets to the rim. Paola has put it together. I mean, I'm not quite sure what the score was at the end of the first half, but they have scored a lot in this quarter. Stevens, sorry, Custer rather, at the line for two. That foul was on Isaac Hall. That's his first. Larson, he's got another point in him. They all, or Chanu is already in the bonus here. Along with Eli Richmond, back in Paola. Waiting on the second shot here. I think, Land did Landon Bilby just check in? Landon's been in for a little bit. All right. Second shot off the mark. Kester trying to get that rebound. Paola with no numbers. Larson steals it right back. No way. Lob to Seamster. And that, <laughs> that was a bit out of his reach. That would have been incredible. A little bit out of his reach, but nonetheless, it's still exciting. <laughs> you, love, you love seeing when the guys are out here having fun. A little showtime action. Instead, Quite fun to watch. Did Larson pick up the offensive foul on that? Or no, it just, did it went just out go of out of bounds. Okay. Kohe for another three. That's off the front of the rim. Doesn't he just have a beautiful be, jump shot? He does. A very, very good looking jump shot. That's going to be out of bounds on Sanders. Seems Colby to Baker. take a seat. Colby Baker back in for the Blue Comets. Now we got Tristan Katzer. In for Paola as J.D. Troutman takes a seat as well. Jalen Duncan looking to find somebody. Elliott makes a move in the paint. And they call a travel on that spin move. Co Coach Crabtree is not happy about it because Elliot lost control of the ball as he spun, and they still called a travel there, and that's what Coach Crabtree was trying to argue to the ref. Crabtree, as young as he is, has had a little bit of a history with coaching before coming to shoot high school. He was uh, in the graduate program at UTEP um, and was in a, a graduate assistant coach there. And so he, has, he really has the experience of coaching very athletic Division I college men and, and uh, being alongside them. Colby Baker to the line. He gets two free shots. 1.7 seconds left. He's about 50% from the free throw line this year. Off the front of the rim. He's only got two so far from the first half. Make that. Jalen Duncan tries the turnaround fadeaway. He gets a good laugh out of that because that was not a great shot. We're going to go ahead and take a 30 second timeout. We'll be right back on Comet Vision. Ordered in Fredonia, Alert Construction Services was founded in Southeast Kansas as a small regional contractor and has now grown into a national heavy industrial construction company with regional offices across the United States. The Alert family is proud of our Southeast Kansas roots because we know that the people of Southeast Kansas make great employees. At Alert, we know that employees are our greatest asset and we're committed to investing in the growth of our employees and our community. Alert Construction Services, proud to support the youth of Southeast Kansas through the Firescape Coffee House and KFEX Firescape Radio. Back here at Chanute High School where the Chanute Blue Comets are up 56 to 34. Uh, pretty extensive lead here mm -hmm. for Chanute. 
Nonetheless, though, the second half, Paola came out and uh, really seems to be a completely different team in the first half. Yeah, well, they've been playing better on offense, that's for sure, but it's still a 22-point lead for Chanute. We've been able to keep our offense going, but they've also brought their offense to life, scoring some points here. Absolutely. It makes you wonder if Paola would have played the way that they are now in the first half, how much closer of a game mm -hmm. uh, it would be at the moment. Because, yeah, that third quarter was, it seemed pretty close in score. Right. Blue Comets now with the ball to start the second half. Baker. We also have Bilby and Jalen Duncan in, along with Chris Harding and Elliot Stevenson. Harding with the ball looking for Baker down low. Baker's really posting up hard. Blue Comets doing a great job of moving the ball around, though. <laughs> Baker, backside cut, does not finish. Sanders gets it over to Curley. Sanders will pick up the frustration foul as Baker gets, uh, gets a rebound. His second foul. Which is pretty surprising because Sanders has been all over the floor tonight. Mm -hmm. Quite impressive that you can be that efficient and all over the floor on defense and not foul. Stevenson, wide open three off the front of the rim. Wow. Jalen Duncan and his throws speed it to saves his, it. Throws it through the other guy's legs. Landon Bilby, it's going to be a little long there. He's going to push it back up the floor. That's going to be Troutman looking for a lob to Richmond, and that's going to be hit two points for him. Chris Harding making a play up the floor and one. Going to the line for three. Those He's are the sitting at five right now. His first points were also came from an and one that he converted into a three-point Those play. are the buckets right there that are earned in the weight room. Exactly. Being able to absorb the contact and still knock down the shot. Off the mark there. In and out for Harding's second free throw attempt. Sanders gets a blocking foul, even though he was very, very much out of control there. Landon yeah. Bilby will pick up, I believe, his third foul. <laughs> yep. Cooper Lukey in for Elliott Stevenson. So all these guys in the game right now are off the bench. No starters in at all. And it looks like, looks like J.D. Troutman is going to throw so it in gonna, for the Panthers. They called that on the floor there. Yep. Sanders, round the back, crossover, gets it over to Hoffine, gets called for the travel. Head coach Ryan O'Shell looks at Hoffine and says, well, you know, it, it's what they've been calling all night. Mm -hmm. Either learn for it, from it or uh, keep getting called for it. Bilby back to Harding. Boy, and Troutman came out of nowhere. Left hand Come up, on. and that's good. And he's going to the Troutman, line. he's got 10, looking for his 11th point of the game. Great defensive play by Troutman. Really push that, trying to cut their deficit to below 20 now. For the first time since the first half, I, would, I think. Yep, and... He's got 11 points. Freshman Lawrence Cheney is checking in. Rumor has it those shoes are $30,000. They are solid gold. I don't believe that rumor at all. That's why it's a rumor. Lawrence Cheney now with the ball. Gives it to Lukey. Lukey oh. crossover. Could have taken that. Should have. Decides not to. 
This guy cannot guard Cooper. Get Cooper the ball. Iso. Cooper. Now to Baker. Now to Cheney. Cooper coming through. Duncan. Don't Not get. quite the shooter his brother is, but nonetheless, he still gets two. Duncan is actually quite close to being able to dunk, and he's a freshman. Sanders way off the mark. Unfortunately, airballs that three-pointer. Band gives him a hard time about that. So does the student section. We have a pretty great student section here. Duncan. Now to Baker, now to Cheney. Lukey trying to get through. Gets it over to Bilby. Now back to Duncan. Ooh. Cheney now to Lukey. Lukey drives middle, gets it back out to Duncan, almost loses it. Now to Cheney. They're just throwing the ball around, wasting what? some time. The whole student section's telling Lawrence Cheney to shoot the ball. Shoot your shot, young man. I also saw his little brother jumping at it up and down with frustration. Let's oh, see what the Blue Comets can make of this. Cheney Come gets on, it back Lawrence. to Lukey for a long three. In and out. Unfortunate for Cooper Lukey. Richmond gets called for the carry. As soon as it bounces above your head, that's they'll call that every time, unfortunately. Back to the Blue Comets. Four minutes left in the fourth. All right, Lawrence. Shoot the ball before you get jumped by the student section. These boys out here are having fun. Cheney driving baseline. Back to Lukey. Lukey. Making Jet. some moves, going Jab nowhere. Step almost had him on the ground. J.D. Troutman picks up another foul. <clears throat> Blue Comets are going to throw it in for the far side sideline. That's Troutman's second foul of the night. Shaney now with the ball, gets it to Baker. Baker tries to zip it in there, gets the ball back after the deflection. Bilby for three, no good. Blue Comets get the ball back. Looking really good against this um, a majority of the starting five against the Panthers. And I think this is like Bilby to Lukey. Cooper Lukey for three. Pushes it up to 63 points. Last night Joel Embiid still had more points than this. <laughs> but they surpassed Carl Anthony Towns. They did. Shout out to the local Kansas City native. Is he actually? Yeah, he's from Carl Kansas City. Anthony Towns? Yeah. <laughs> you may double check that. Maybe I'm thinking of somebody else, but I'm pretty sure he is. Possibly. Look it up real quick. Gotcha. Troutman trying to pick up the foul. Does not pick it up. Neither does Bilby. No call there. Jalen Duncan. Baker pushing Lukey through. He's from through. not very far from Kansas City. He's from New Jersey. No. Who am I thinking of then? I'm not sure. Look up where he went to high school. Bilby for three. No good. Panthers pushing the ball back again. Still trying to score everywhere they can. He Floater. went to St. Joseph High School in, 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 in uh, New Jersey. Dadgum, who am I thinking about then? Yeah, I don't know. Well, needless to say, never listen to what I had to say. <laughs> Hoffine almost got that steal. Lukey, another three-point attempt. Oh, in and out from the corner. 
<laughs> Unlucky for Cooper Lukey. He's had a couple that have gone in and out. Jack Sigma is from Kansas City. I don't know who that is. Uh, <laughs> one of the best Supersonics ever. Well, they're not a team anymore. Bilby driving the lane gets blocked <laughs> by Hoffine. I don't even Troutman. Think, I don't even think Hoffine jumped there. And I don't think he did either. Now I'm really going to have to look this up. <laughs> we have the rest of the bench coming in of Warwick Olson, Carson Spurrier, Daniel Stanley. Cooper Lukey still out there, so is Lawrence Cheney. Luki now with the ball gets it to Spurrier. Cheney just under, just about at a minute and a half. 21 point lead. Spurrier, Safe to say this game is over. Wide open three, no good. Luki with the rebound. Now to Cheney Spurrier. Luki gets it stolen. Almost got the block. And that's going to be two more points for. Tristan Katzer. That's his first two points of the game. Blocking foul on Katzer. We'll be shooting free throws the rest of this game after the next foul. Chaney to throw the ball in. Gets it to Lukey. Lukey gets stripped. Player with a fast break. That was Alexander Pincheco. 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 I'm sorry. I, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. His first two points of the game. Every time the ball touches Lawrence's hands, it gets extremely loud in here. Warwick Olsen for three. That's his first three of his varsity career. And he, Many sure, more of those to come. He will have a very long varsity career as a freshman. And he'll probably be in this school for five years, not the brightest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just joking. Warwick Olsen is also in this Comet Vision class of ours, so we like to give him a hard time. That last shot was made by Lucas Nance, and that's going to be the end of the game. Thank you all for joining us today, where the Schnoo Blue Comets will take this win, and they will have a great night's sleep tonight. 66-48 uh, is your final score. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. We appreciate everybody joining in and showing your support for our Comet Vision class. On behalf of Chanute High School, my name is Caleb Wood. This is Bryce Ginswider. Have a good night.